In Chapter 8, we study the dynamics of open chain robots. For example, the forward dynamics problem is to calculate the joint accelerations theta double dot, given the current joint positions theta, the joint velocities theta dot, and the forces and torques tau applied at each joint. The forward dynamics is useful for simulation. The inverse dynamics problem is to find the joint forces and torques tau needed to create the acceleration theta double dot for the given joint positions and velocities. The inverse dynamics is useful in control of robots. Robot dynamics is necessary not just for simulation and control, but also for the analysis of robot motion planners and controllers, as we'll see in chapters 9 through 11. In this book, we study two approaches to solving the forward and inverse dynamics problems. The first is the Lagrangian formulation, a variational approach based on the kinetic and potential energy of the robot. The second approach is the Newton-Euler formulation, which relies on F equals MA applied to each individual link of the robot. The focus of Chapter 8 is primarily on the Newton-Euler formulation because it uses some of the geometric tools we have already developed, and it results in an efficient recursive algorithm for calculating the inverse dynamics. In this video, though, we start with the Lagrangian formulation due to its conceptual simplicity. The key object in the Lagrangian formulation is the Lagrangian, L. The Lagrangian for a mechanical system is its kinetic energy minus its potential energy. The potential energy P depends only on the configuration theta, while the kinetic energy K depends on theta and theta dot. I won't derive the Lagrangian equations of motions, which you can find in many textbooks on mechanics. I'll just state the result. The vector of joint forces and torques, tau, is equal to the time derivative of the partial derivative of L with respect to theta dot minus the partial derivative of L with respect to theta. The joint forces and torques tau are dual to the joint velocities theta dot, meaning that tau dotted with theta dot represents the power consumed or produced by the joints. We can write this vector equation in its components as shown here, where tau i is the ith element of the n vector tau. Let's apply the formulation to a 2R robot in gravity. The lengths of the links are L1 and L2, and all the mass of the robot is concentrated at point masses, m1 and m2, as shown. We need to calculate the kinetic and potential energy of the two point masses, so first we calculate the position of mass 1, given by the coordinates x1 and y1. We can take the derivative to get the velocity of m1. We can do the same for mass 2, deriving its position and velocity. With this information, we can calculate the kinetic energy of link 1 as 1 half m1 v1 squared, where v1 squared is just x1 dot squared plus y1 dot squared. Applying our earlier derivation, the kinetic energy simplifies to 1 half m1 l1 squared theta1 dot squared. We can similarly calculate the kinetic energy of link 2. The potential energy of each mass depends only on its height, or its y-coordinate. Now we can calculate the Lagrangian as the sum of the kinetic energies minus the potential energies of the links, and express the joint torques in terms of the derivatives of the Lagrangian. This is tedious to do manually, but let's look at how we would calculate the derivatives for one particular component of the Lagrangian, which I'll call L comp. The impact of this component of the Lagrangian on the torque at the second joint is tau 2 comp. If we take the partial derivative of L comp with respect to theta 2 dot, we get m2 l1 l2 theta 1 dot cosine of theta 2, and if we take the time derivative of that, we get the expression you see here. Now we can subtract the partial derivative of l comp with respect to theta 2 to get this expression. The last two terms cancel, so the final torque at joint 2 due to l comp is m2 l1 theta 1 double dot cosine theta 2. If we do these calculations for all the terms in the Lagrangian, we get these equations of motion. Even for a simple 2R robot, the equations are rather complicated. Notice that some terms are linear in the joint acceleration theta double dot. Some terms do not depend on the joint acceleration, but instead depend on a product of joint velocities, like theta 1 dot times theta 2 dot, or theta 2 dot squared. And some terms have no dependence on the joint velocities or accelerations. With this observation, we can write the vector equation of motion in this form. Tau equals m of theta times theta double dot 
plus C of theta, theta dot, plus G of theta, where the matrix M and the vectors C and G are shown here. We call M the mass matrix. For a robot with n joints, this matrix is n by n, and for our 2R example, it is 2 by 2. We call the vector C a velocity product term, since it is composed of terms with theta i squared, or a theta i times theta j in it. Finally, we call the vector G the gravity term, since it depends on gravity. We call this a gravity term under the assumption that the potential energy comes only from gravity, but if there were springs at the robot joints, those springs would also contribute to the potential energy, and therefore to g of theta. Overall, this equation looks like F equals ma plus a gravity force, except that the accelerations of the masses depend not only on the joint accelerations, but also the products of the joint velocities. These velocity product terms appear because the joint coordinates are not inertial coordinates. We will explore velocity product terms in more detail in the next video. There's one more term we could add to the right-hand side, the Jacobian transpose times F-tip, where F-tip is the wrench that the end effector applies to the environment. We learned about this term in Chapter 5. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at velocity product terms.